Hey everybody, this is uh, Frankie Slauson, and uh, welcome to another great edition of the Frankie Slauson Show and my uh, interview series for the summer, Frankie's Icons of Pop Culture series. And today we got a really, really big icon for you guys uh, to enjoy today. He is a legendary folk singer with with hits like uh, "If I Had a Hammer," the, "The Lemon Tree," "La Bamba," and many, many others. I give you Mr. Trini Lopez. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Larry. How are you? I'm doing great. Uh, my name's Frankie, not Larry. Oh. <laughs> you know why I called you Larry? You said Larry on the uh, caller ID on the phone. Oh, probably uh, Larry. Oh, that's my uh, that's my dad. My dad's uh, cell phone number. Okay. <laughs> but that's okay. That's okay. So you, your full name is? Tell me uh, your full name. Sean Edward Slauson. Sean Slauson. Okay, Sean. Okay. They just call me Frankie for short. You know, that's just a nickname, more or less. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. No, that's okay. That's okay. Uh, but anyway, uh, it's uh, it's great to have you on the show. I mean, you are definitely uh, uh, a very iconic figure and a legend uh and it's just great that you actually have the time to uh, let me chat with you for a little while. My pleasure. I, I like to do interviews. I enjoy them. And you just recently just came back from doing a, a, a tour in Europe, huh? Yes, sir. I was uh, doing, uh, I did eight concerts with uh, the famous European uh, conductor, musician, orchestrator, uh, uh, artist named Andre Rue. Who was very famous in Europe? Okay, okay. I don't know if yeah. I ever. I don't know if I've ever heard of him before, but uh, but that's pretty cool though that you got to do that. How did a lot that? Of people don't know him yet in America, but they will because he is becoming fast uh, known in 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 the states. He has uh, when he does his shows with a seventy piece symphonic orchestra. Oh, wow. Would you believe that um, they, they tape everything? They do CDs. On the shows, they do uh, DVDs, and they put them out all over the world. And uh, the one, the shows that I've seen him here in the Los Angeles area is uh, PBS here in uh, LA. Okay, okay. So he just so the, to... the one, the show that I did, the shows that I did with him now will be shown uh, starting. Uh, they're already uh, show, being shown all over the world right now, especially Europe. But in the states, they're going to be shown. Uh, my my part of the of me being on his show, uh, they're going to start showing them in about a month or so. And I also did a couple of songs in his new uh, CD. He has a new CD coming out. It's a compilation of uh, of songs uh, with different artists from different parts of the world. And um, the one that I did uh, with Andre is going to be uh, I'm going to be in there along with uh, with uh, Jermaine Jackson. Oh, okay, yeah, Michael Jackson's brother. Huh. Michael Jackson's brother, and he was, he was also in the show that I did live concert that I just came back from in Holland. He was in the show also. He was also in the program. Oh, wow. So how 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 did that get all set up for you to be able to to come down there and do a show? They wanted me uh, when I did my. Uh, I went to I went to Holland in um, in February, the beginning of this year, and uh, and I did two songs on his new album. And uh, and he wanted me after we recorded these Australian. He said, "I'd like for you to uh, to come back this summer, and I'd like for you to do eight concerts with me." And I said, "Oh, sure, that'd be great." And he gave me a real good offer, so I did it. Wow! Well, that's pretty cool. I mean, I I think it's great that uh, you know uh, that you're still able to keep uh, you know keep playing music. That you're not like fully retired. Like you're not going to give it up anytime soon. You know. I, I have been uh, semi. <laughs> <laughs> I have been semi retired since uh, 1981, but my phone keeps ringing. So uh, <laughs> when the deals are good, I do it. <laughs> oh sure, oh sure, and, and I think the fans really appreciate that, especially the ones that have followed your career uh, even while even when you took a break that remember you from from all from the early days. And, and uh, it's kind of funny because uh, one of the first actual interviews that I ever did when I was on the radio back like around 2006 or whatever, I actually uh -huh. I actually got to talk to the guy who was your one of your first, I don't know, no, I don't know if he was your first drummer, but I know he was your drummer, Mickey Jones. Oh, well, Mickey, yeah, sure. And we chatted about you a little bit, and uh, he kind of told me how the whole story uh 
uh, happened, uh, how you guys met, and, and uh, how uh, you guys got to work on some stuff, uh, like If I Had a Hammer was kind of like your first big hit, and, and uh, he worked on that with you. Yes, uh, he was uh, my drummer back in Dallas before I came to Hollywood in 1960 to further my career, and I came to Hollywood to join, of all people, uh, Buddy Holly's uh, Crickets. Oh, wow. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Buddy was my friend. He was one of the first uh, artists to try and help me uh, with my career oh. uh, uh, down in Texas, because he was... Yeah. And I, and I was born and raised in Dallas, so I used to sing around the Dallas, and then all around Texas, and Louisiana and Oklahoma, places like that, that part of the country. And and so Buddy liked me, so he wanted to... And then he, he went, of course, he had his tragic death and so yeah. on. And and uh, the guys in the band liked me, so they wanted me to, to go on the road and be their lead singer. Oh, wow. Yeah, so, so yeah right after Buddy died. Wow. And uh, that didn't materialize because... Uh, they were taking their sweet time in, in rehearsing and, uh -huh. and getting ready to do this, and I, I needed to help my family financially. Um, so I, I, I went and got a, a job at a, at a nightclub in Hollywood, not in Hollywood, in Beverly Hills, a real nice uh, English pub. It was a beautiful place called the Year Little Club. It was a, a very, very quaint, a very pretty uh, little nightclub in the heart of Beverly Hills. And I was booked for two weeks, and I stayed there with just me and my guitar. And from there, I kept hearing about a place called PJ's. It was the place in Hollywood next to the Beverly Hills. And this is a place for a lot of the bigger uh, stars, Hollywood stars, sure. actors, just would go, like Sinatra and uh, people like uh, Sean Conn. <laughs> oh, yeah. And uh, people like Steve McQueen, Paul Newman, all these big stars. And, and so I... I Got it. They wanted me to go work there after the little hour. I was there for a year, and I I, I started a big following in, in with my career in 1960, and so I went to PJ's and I was booked for three months, and I stayed a year and a half. Oh jeez! And and it was there that that Mickey <coughs> Jones, uh, my old drummer from Dallas, came came to Hollywood. He wanted to uh, further his career. <coughs> oh. He wanted to further his career. Okay. So. Uh, he started working with me at PJ's, and then we ended up uh, doing a couple of albums live at PJ's, and those are the that got me started. Sinatra used to come in there all the time, and, and he saw me, and he liked my act, and uh, he gave me a uh, eight-year recording contract. Jeez. Yeah, and uh, and so I Mickey went on drums, and then I got me a bass player, and uh, I had a little trio, and I recorded, if I had a hammer there, I recorded uh, La Bamba, I recorded uh, Kansas City, mm -hmm. I recorded uh, This Land is Your Land, uh, Michael Rowe, You Bought a Shore, and on and on. <laughs> Did you and Mickey have a pretty good friendship? I mean, overall? Yeah, yeah many, many years. And he's still my friend. He called me about four days ago. Oh, wow. Yeah, he <laughs> called me about four days ago to say hello. He said, I'd like to see you, man. I haven't seen you in ages. I said, yeah, we'll get together. He lives in... Uh, he lives uh, around the Sherman Oaks area, okay. past okay. With, with what they call North Hollywood. Yeah, yeah, I think he's And I live in Palm Springs, Palm Springs, California, which is about an hour and a half from <coughs> Los Angeles, from the Los Angeles area. Oh, wow. And I, I live right now currently in northern Minnesota, but actually I'm moving to uh, uh, South Dakota. Have you ever done any, tour, any uh, touring through South Dakota before? I'm not, uh, would you believe I've been around the world like five times? <laughs> I've never been to North or South Dakota ever. Oh wow! Have you been to Minnesota before? Never. Yeah, Minnesota. Yeah, Minneapolis. Oh. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's kind of crazy. I I figure if you would have done some touring, you would have went uh, every state in the United States, especially. <laughs> I have been to just about every state, but I've never been to uh, to North or South Dakota. Oh wow! Never. Oh, no. That's where we got Mount Rushmore and everything in South Dakota. <laughs> what is that? Uh, we got Mount Rushmore in South Dakota. Oh, of course. <laughs> Beautiful. What a historical site uh, that is, yeah. So, like, uh, like, let's kind of go back to, like, your early days, because I'm really interested in the, those type of stories. Uh, uh, like, what inspired you to become a musician in the first place? My, my father was a singer. He was, when he was a young man in Mexico, my father was a singer, a musician, an actor, and a dancer. Oh, wow. 
when he was a young man. But then uh, my father, uh, not having an education, and he, was, he came from a very poor family. My father used to come to America uh, across the river, you know, illegally. Yeah. And uh, on the third time that he got enough money from working here in, in, in the United States, he went back to, uh, he went back to uh, Mexico and married my mother. And she was uh, 16 and he was 18. And they came to America illegally. And they stayed here, and then they became American citizens. And all of my brothers and sisters were all born in Dallas. Huh. Okay. So because of my father, uh, I started uh, singing because he wanted me to learn the songs that he used to sing when he was a kid. And he bought me a $12 guitar, and he bought it at a pawn shop. And uh, I don't mind telling you that that guitar happened to be a Gibson guitar. Have you ever heard about Gibson guitar? Yes, Something? I have. Yes, I have. Well, um, and little did I know that one day I would be asked by Gibson uh, Corporation uh, to design uh, a Trinity Lopez guitar. Oh, wow. And I, and I did, and they, they became very successful. And then, uh, Sean, they wanted me, um, I, I, said, I said to Gibson Corporation after about a year that my guitar was out, I said, you know, I've been thinking maybe we should design a rock and roll model guitar for, for, the, for the young generation, the mm-hmm. young uh, artists. And, uh, and there's no, we've never done that before. Gibson was like the Rolls Royce uh, of the automobile, you know? Yep. And uh, uh, I said, well, I got some ideas about getting a rock and roll model guitar for, for the younger younger artists. And they loved the idea. So I, I, I helped design it like I helped design my first guitar. So now the, my second guitar comes out. And that became more popular than the first one. Oh, to this day, uh, Sean, uh, people like uh, Joe from the Foo Fighters. Yeah. He plays my guitar, my Trinity Love guitar. He loves it. Uh, uh, Paul McCartney's guitar player from Wings, his guitar player, plays my guitar. Uh, Sting, you know, the singer Sting? Yep. His guitar player plays my guitar. Wow. And uh, Bono, <coughs> Bono, the singer. Yeah, from U2, yep. His, yeah, his guitar player plays my guitar, Jeez. and it's become one of the biggest uh, success stories for the world. So, if somebody wanted to buy like a, a like one of your guitars, how much would they pay? They're very, very expensive. Very expensive, uh, in the thousands and the thousands of dollars. Oh wow! There was there was an auction two three years ago in New York. Um, uh, Christie's one of those big uh, auction auctioneer companies. Sure. And they they wanted to uh, raise money for the, I think it was the Katrina disaster, and a lot of the children from that, those cities that were st- st- struck by the by the disaster, they their their uh, instruments in school and all that. When they were in school, they lost all of their uh, they would uh, their instruments were destroyed. So they held this big auction, and uh, and they wanted people like President uh, K- President uh, Clinton. To, to auction saxophone, and he did, and a lot of big stars donated their guitar, uh, their guitars and instruments, pianos and so on. And uh, listen to this: President Clinton's uh, saxophone went for sixty sixty thousand dollars, and then uh, a, a, a guy named they call him the guitar player. Yeah, I think he's with either Bono or he's with Sting. I think he's, he's with a very famous rock and roll. Yeah, I think it's uh, on YouTube. You heard YouTube, is it? Yeah, I believe too. I believe it oh, is. Okay. My Trinity Love is guitar, and it went for, are you ready? Yeah. It went for $280,000. Wow. <laughs> Jeez. I'm sure you're kind of shocked to find that out, I'm sure. I'm still shocked. <laughs> And that was about two years ago. Yeah. And I'm sure somebody must have some money in order to be able to afford something like that, you know. <laughs> somebody really wanted it. Somebody really wanted the guitar. They're very much in demand, by the way. And I was just uh, talking to Gibson Guitars. They're, they're now, they used to be in Chicago. That's where their headquarters was when I was uh, approached by them to design my guitar and then to design my second guitar. And uh, many years later, they moved to Memphis, Tennessee. So they're manufacturing in headquarters, or all in Memphis now, and they call me about uh, about a week a week and a half ago, and they wanna they wanna do some more uh, reproduction of Trinity Lopez guitars. 
Well, that's good. That's really good. Did you, did you ever think that your career was ever going to be as big as you thought it was going to be? No, no, I did not. I have to be very honest with you, Sean. I never told people this, but um, I I wanted just to to be able to record uh, and and have an album. In those days, they used to be LPs. Yep. And I wanted just to have an album of me singing songs and and give them to the nightclub owners in the Los Angeles area or wherever I would be because uh, nightclub owners have a tendency to be a little crass, rude yeah. to artists. For some reason, nightclub owners feel that they are doing the artists a favor by booking them into their nightclubs. Oh, jeez. Okay. Instead, of, instead of the other way around. Wow. Instead of an artist, uh, you know, <laughs> contributing so much business that the artist, that the, that the nightclub should be to have a certain artist in his club entertaining regularly, you know. Yeah, they should so take that. So, yeah, so I wanted, I wanted just to, and I was always very into auditioning and so on and so forth, and I just wanted to record and have an LP in my, under my arm and drop it off at their, at their office and say, look, play it, and if you like me, call me. And and that's all, that's the only reason I wanted to record. Can you believe that? Oh, and, and I suppose the fact, like you were saying, you you wanted to support your family. You know, you that was the oh, the, yeah. the goal too. But, yeah. but you obviously I did that. Yeah. To support my help my father always all my life. Yeah. Well, that's pretty cool though. I mean, it's it's, it's nice to know. I mean, and you're a pretty genuine guy. Like like even though you've had a lot of success and all that. You know how yeah. a lot you know a lot of people are. You know when they're successful, they they want to you know treat people like crap, and they want to be you know they don't do with their fans, even though they say they love their fans. But you really you seem like you really care a lot about. You. That's what makes you uh, a legend in my book. <laughs> Thank you, Thank you, Sean. I, I like people. I, I love people. I love uh, uh, being a human being and being nice to everyone. When I was growing up, my father and mother were so special. They never went to school, by the way. My father and mother were orphans when they were kids and so they never got to have an education but they taught me so much about having respect for people especially older people uh -huh. they used to say son always be very respectful to everyone but especially elders I, I never forgot that and and they taught me to be a nice person they said always be humble no matter how successful you get always be humble and I never forgot that I never forgot that so are you a, are you a pretty big of some of the stuff that goes on today, like some of the music of today, or or do you prefer more of these? Well, uh, because because I I am known for old type music from the sixties, uh, I I favor that more. But I but I love all kinds of music. I love rap. Some of them. <laughs> I love some of the rap music. Uh, I like hip hop. I like uh, country and western. I like I like opera. I like everything. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But you prefer yeah. more of the old stuff, though. That's kind of your your cup of Only tea. Only because I I make a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> so do you got anything that's uh, coming up? Uh, like uh, any more concerts or anything that's going on in your life? Yes. The phone. The phone. Like I said, the phone keeps ringing, and they want me to do shows here. They want me to do shows there. They want me to go to Europe. Uh, they want me to record again, and I've got I'm um, two motion pictures. Two westerns. I've never done a western in my life. I love, I love acting. I've always enjoyed acting, and I've never done enough of it. And I'm up for two westerns, and they want me to star in the two movies. Oh wow! Oh wow! So we'll see what happens. Yeah, and uh, you, you did some acting back in the early days. Uh, Thirty Dozen. I guess that was a really popular movie back in those days. One of the biggest movies Hollywood ever made. <laughs> about the war too, or, or which war was it about? Yeah. Yeah, war picture. We did it. We did it all over. Uh, we shot all over England. Okay, okay. Well, you got to work. You got to work with a lot of uh, a great cast of characters. Anyway, too. Yeah. Oh my God. Yes, I was with some of the biggest uh, Academy Award uh, nominees, Academy Award winning actors, and it was great. I was there for. I was there for a long time. Uh, my, my contract to do that Dirty Dozen was for four months, and I stayed seven months. And the movie wasn't even half completed. Oh, jeez. It's because of the bloody weather in England, you know? Yeah, yeah, of course. So uh, Sinatra, he just married Mia Farrell in Las Vegas, and the next day he flew to London, and that night he invited me to his uh, flat that he had in, in London, 
and he invited me to dinner, just me and him and Mia, and we had dinner, and as I'm getting ready to leave, he said to me, I, I was opening the door, and it's a turning. He says, by the way, I understand that your movie is running really late. I said, yeah. I said, that's right. That they're really running late. And and I said, how did you know? He says, oh, I know. <laughs> so now I knew everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's so, right. uh, that's... He said, you know what I think? I think you should leave the movie. And I said, I, I looked at him. I said, you want me to, you think I should leave the movie? He said, yeah, yeah. And I said, well, why is that, if I may ask? He said, well, because you're, you're as hot. This is exactly what he said. You're as hot as a firecracker right now in your career. And the public is very fickle. And they'll forget about you. So I think you should, uh, you should go back to your touring. And I said, oh. I said, okay, all right. So he got three attorneys to get me off the movie. Oh, wow. And I, would, I had one of the biggest parts coming up at the end. I was going to be one of the heroes at the end of the movie, but I never got a chance to do it. Oh, okay, well, yeah, I mean, it's probably a good thing that you took his advice because, uh, I mean, like, like I said, I mean, you're known for singing, you know, yeah. I'm sure that's what you want to be known for, you know, for anyway, being a singer rather than an actor, but who knows, right. I mean, sometimes there, sometimes there are people want to try some, uh, different things, you know. <laughs> well, now, now I would like to, to do it more than ever because I, as I get older, you know, I, I feel more confident about myself as an yeah. actor. And I, I really would like to do some more. So, God willing, <laughs> that's what happens, you know. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, there, Trudy, I, I, I definitely appreciate uh, having you on. This has been uh, definitely a rare, a rare treat because, uh, like I said, you're very you're big icon, and uh, it's just nice to know that uh, you have the time to let a little guy like me, you know, speak with you. Well, thank you, thank you, Sean. It's my pleasure. And, uh, well, is there anything else that uh, you want to say to your fans before we let you go? Well, if anybody is interested in seeing some of the things that I've been doing for the last three, four, five years, <coughs> they can click into TrinityLopez.com. Okay. And they can, out, they can find out, they can look at my biography, my photography, my discography. Everything is in there. Everything, including my latest album. I just finished my 65th CD, oh, 65 geez. albums. Oh, wow. My 65th CD, and it's called Trinity Lopez, Into the Future. Okay, okay. Yeah, I, I heard something about that. Uh, I saw wow. something on YouTube about that. Yes. Hey, I think you'll like it. I think people will like it. It's uh, I've got a lot of songs I've never done before. I've got a lot of Sinatra songs that I've always wanted to do. Frank Sinatra discovered me, you know, at yep. DJs, and... Uh, and he was like my father. I got to know him for 36 years. Jeez, that's a long time to know yep. somebody like that. <laughs> sure. All right. All right, well, thanks to you, you again, and uh, you have a great rest of the day, and uh, uh, I'll definitely let people know uh, of your website and this interview when it goes live. Yeah, please do. Please do. All right. Thanks, thank Trini. You. Thank you, Sean. Yeah, thank you very much. Bye-bye. Okay. <laughs> And that was the the legendary Trini Lopez, the iconic and uh, legendary Trini Lopez, the folk singer uh, slash actor slash you know just you know just singer. You know he he's a guy who uh, like I said you know is cares about his fans and and uh, that's what I like. I mean uh, what when it, when it comes to a big guest like like somebody like him, uh, it's very cool to know. That he, that people like him are nice enough to take the time to talk to somebody like me who they've never even heard of. You know, I'm not, you know, I'm not a big name or anything, but I'm trying the best that I can, and uh, I think it's working. And now that we're on year two of uh, the interviews and everything, and uh, the second half of Frankie's uh, Icons of Pop Culture series that's going to run through uh, September. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is uh, very cool, and I, I appreciate the fact of having Trini on. And uh, just uh, keeping more icons uh, noticed, letting people know about my my uh, show and everything. And I really appreciate it. I appreciate all you guys, and I appreciate all the listeners. Pre- appreciate all the guests, and uh, I ain't done by a long shot. <laughs> all right, everybody. See you next time for another great Frankie Slauson show and Frankie's Icons of Pop Culture summer interview series continues. <laughs>